Hello, quad bros new and old. Welcome back, or welcome to the channel. Even the most veteran of War Thunder players out there will tell you that tanking an enlisted is no simple matter. Many players find themselves detonated, strafed, burned out, or otherwise disabled before they're able to even scratch the paint of enemy vehicles. And that's why I have put together my personal top 10 tips for troubled tankers. Yeah, say that one 10 times fast. Let's get into it, guys. Our first tip is one that might seem kind of obvious at first, but has been the death of many tankers, both veteran and new alike. Tanks have different types of shells, and you need to make sure you have the correct one loaded for the job that you're currently trying to do. What type of shell is currently loaded can be seen in the bottom right of your screen. Now, most tanks come with an armor-piercing shell, usually AP, APCBC, heat, uh, whatever it might be, some other variant of shell that's designed to take on enemy vehicles. They also come with high explosive, which is used to, as you might guess, blast enemy infantry into tiny little itty bitty bits. Now some tanks, such as the USA's Sherman Lion, also come with smoke shells that are handy and can lay down a dense wall of smoke, perfect for sporting in advance onto an objective or smoking an enemy tank while you flank around it. Regardless of the specifics of your vehicle, make sure you always are using the right type of shell. There's nothing worse than having a high explosive shell loaded and equipped when an enemy tank rounds the corner. When in doubt, try to have armor piercing loaded. After all, an AP shell is still going to blast an enemy infantryman to pieces, while an HE shell it's not going to do anything to help you against the tank. Next tip is about the commander hatch of your tank. When in the commander seat, you can pop out of the commander's hatch by pressing control on PC or B or you know circle on Xbox slash PlayStation, whichever one you're on. While out of the commander's hatch, you're easily shot, but you also have access to a powerful roof-mounted machine gun and a much better field of view. And on top of all of that, you could even swap to your own personal weapon to stop pesky infantry from getting any ideas. When I'm tanking, I do what I like to call the pop and squat. You pop out of the hatch, spray down some infantry with your top-mounted machine gun or personal weapon, and then squat back down quickly. Because of how quick this can be, you're only out of the hatch for maybe a couple seconds at most. It's hard for enemy players to take you out, and AI typically won't target you quick enough either. But be careful, if you linger too long, you're going to find yourself quickly down a crew member. Our next tip again has to do with the different seats of your tank, this time focusing on the gunner seat. So while you're in the commander seat, like I mentioned, you have this nice field of view around you where you could see enemy infantry approaching you, or maybe enemy infantry off in front of you, but you can't exactly tell where your shot is going to go. If I were to aim just way out in the distance here, you can see that my crosshair where I'm aiming is just simply in the center of my reticule. But if I switch to the gunner seat, you can see exactly where my shell is going to go. It's going to drop down towards the bottom, and if we fire, you can see that my shell did indeed drop off towards the bottom there. Now, this is really useful when you're firing at range, especially with HE shells that tend to have longer drop-off, or smoke shells for that matter as well. But it's also useful for when you're aiming at enemy vehicles. You can see if I aim at the front of this jumbo, or if I aim at its turret, it's red. It means it's not going to penetrate the enemy tank. It's not going to do anything. But if I aim over to the side, you can see it turns green, meaning yes, it will penetrate. But if, in my, if I'm in my commander seat, I have no idea where I could aim and where I could possibly take out an enemy vehicle. So whenever you're engaging enemy armor or engaging enemy infantry at long distances, make sure you switch to the gunner seat so you can see where your shot's going to go and if you're going to penetrate or not when firing at an enemy vehicle. Tankers and enlisted have access to perks that are otherwise unavailable to other soldier types in the game. Sometimes, these perks even relate only to specific seats in the tank, such as the loader being able to change ammo type without losing reload progress, or being able to increase your tank gun reload speed. Be careful and keep an eye on these perks and where your crew is at in your tank, because if they're in the wrong seat, then they won't actually gain the benefit of those perks, and they'll just be wasted perk points and perk slots. On top of all that, loaders also serve a very important purpose in game. As you probably guessed, they help with the loading of your main cannon. In the unfortunate event that your tank is unable to crew the loader position, probably because they're mush at the bottom of your tank, the time it takes to reload your main cannon will actually be almost doubled, making your tank significantly less effective in combat. Many tanks and enlisted, especially ones from the United States tech tree, such as the M4A2 Sherman, feature a stabilizer. 
Now this stabilizer helps keep your main cannon steady while you're moving, meaning that tanks with these stabilizers can be used very, very aggressively. If you're using one of these tanks, make sure to take advantage of that stabilizer. Use it to pop smoke on an enemy tank while you move around and flank it. Or slowly push up with your infantry while firing HE and peppering the objective with machine gun fire. On the flip side, if you encounter an enemy tank that has a stabilizer, make sure to not allow it to flank behind you or to the side of you. Always try to keep the engagement distance as far as possible. This way, you'll negate the mobility advantage that the stabilizer provides and actually flip the engagement in your favor. You may think that your main cannon is the best tool available to you in a tank, but you'd actually be wrong most of the time. In Enlisted, the main cannon of a tank can oftentimes be very inconsistent, and while, yeah, a big hit of 20 plus kills may look great on your TikTok, it's not really something that you should rely on getting often. In fact, many main cannons, such as the 37mm on the Stuart tank, actually have less explosive filler than a hand grenade. Instead, think of your machine guns as your primary weapon. The machine guns of your tank are the most consistent damage outputter available to you, and utilizing them often and well is crucial to racking up kills and supporting your team. Constantly try to lay down fire with both your coaxial machine gun, as well as utilizing the aforementioned pop and squat technique to dish out extra damage with your roof mounted machine gun and your commander. When your machine guns are properly used in tandem with your main cannon, you'll quickly find yourself wiping enemy squads out with ease. Though it is at the top of its food chain, the tank still has many natural predators in the wild, such as planes, explosive packs, or even other wild tanks. But one of the most deadly and crafty of a tank's natural foes is the sinister anti-tank soldier. These soldiers are armed with bazookas, panzerfausts, or other anti-tank rifles and will make quick work of your tank, and you should always be on the lookout for them. If you find yourself engaging an enemy squad, make sure to take out any soldiers that you see that are armed with these anti-tank weapons and target them as soon as possible. Without access to these powerful weapons, the enemy will have to rely on explosive packs or satchel charges both of which require them to close the distance and are much easier for you to avoid than a launcher fired at 200 meters. One major mistake I see tankers of all skill ranges make is simply sitting in the back of the map shelling an objective over and over again. While sometimes this is the correct course of action, oftentimes it's not going to help your team very much. Smart enemies are going to have multiple rally points down and will be able to quickly replace any losses that you inflict. Instead, a better option is to lock down an avenue of approach to the objective. If the enemy is harassed and shelled as they try to push onto the objective, they're more likely to be forced to deal with your tank, and thus their focus is going to be shifted away from the objective and onto you, which allows your team to secure the point. But try to position yourself in a way that cuts off reinforcements to the objective. That way the enemy is unable to defend without also taking serious casualties first. And then when the enemy inevitably comes for you, make sure to always try to stay mobile. Avoid any launchers, explosive packs that are inevitably going to be thrown at you. Your goal is to delay them for as long as you can and inflict as much damage as you can while your team is able to get on and secure the objective. While this is certainly more dangerous and difficult than sitting further in the back behind your team, this style can be the difference between winning or losing a match. Another tip is to take advantage of the kill feed to gather information about enemy vehicles in your match. In this clip, you can see a 792 MG34 get a kill in the kill feed, which alerts me to the fact that an enemy tank is roaming around. Fortunately for me, the enemy tank is otherwise preoccupied. Nevertheless, using the information given to you in the kill feed can be a great way to identify potential threats. For example, if I'm in a Sherman tank and I see a KWK-37 cannon in the kill feed, I know a Panzer III is around, which is really an easy kill. But a KWK-40? That's a Panzer IV, which is killable, but still a dangerous enemy. An 88mm KWK-36? That's a Tiger, and it's hiding somewhere, and I have to find it before it finds me and turns me into a snack. My final tip is one of the weirdest mechanics, and honestly, all of Enlisted. When firing your main cannon, direct hitting an enemy will more often than not cause a huge blast radius and secure you tons of kills. I don't really know why this works the way it does, but it's always been the case as long as I've been playing the game. So when you're firing your HE shells at enemy infantry, a well-placed round directly into an enemy soldier will be more effective than shooting the ground around them. 
One useful way to guarantee a direct hit is to pepper an enemy soldier with machine gun fire until they fall down to revive themselves, and then you finish them off with the main cannon. It's probably against the Geneva Conventions, but those are more guidelines than actual rules, right? That's it for me, guys. I hope these 10 tips for tankers helped you guys out in some way. What tips do you guys all have that I didn't say here? Leave a comment down below, and while you're there, like and subscribe for more tips, gameplay, and news updates for Enlisted. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.